This is our second session on Ephesians 5, 22 to 24. And uh, my hope in this session is that we get a sense of the big picture of these three verses right here. And uh, then see how the structure that Paul has built sheds light on the meaning of the specifics. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Or you could translate that, be subject. Wouldn't change the meaning. For the husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. But as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Father, I pray that you would grant us to see the beauty and the wonder of the relationship between marriage and Christ and the church, and that we would go deep in the way Paul, under your inspiration, has led us. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So here's the basic structure as I see it. Test it by what you see. Wives, submit to your own husbands is a command that is repeated basically here. Wives should submit in everything to their husbands. So I'll draw a line like this. And as to the Lord modifies how they do that. Similarly here, as the church submits to Christ, that's how wives should submit in everything to their husbands. So I'll draw that. So you have a sandwich, you might say. Some would call it a chiasm, I suppose. But we don't need to go into that. So wives, be subject to your husbands. Wives, be subject in everything to your husbands. Wives, do this as you submit to the Lord. Wives, do this as the church submits to Christ. And then in the middle here, you have support or ground or argument for why wives should submit to husbands as to the Lord and why they should submit in everything to their husbands as the church submits to Christ. And the reason is, for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. And if you ask, which I did, and I don't know for sure what the answer is, why Lord is used here, wives, in the way you submit to the Lord, submit to your husbands, and here Christ is used, as the church submits to Christ, wives, submit to your husbands, and here's a possibility of why he would shift from Lord to Christ here. Because here, he's immediately going to give a ground, and the ground is going to be because the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church. So he's calling attention to a role that is Lord-like. But he also then mentions, and is himself the church's savior. Now, that's really surprising. And this but here, which is translated now in the ESV, but really is a strong, uh, the Greek Allah, but, I think that but is Paul's way of saying, I did mean to write that, but I don't mean for you to take it literally as though the husband is the savior of the wife, anything like Christ is the savior of the church. So the but is to say, in spite of the fact that I just called him savior, 
I still want wives to submit in everything to their husbands as the church to Christ, but the fact that he called Christ the Savior surely has a meaning. In other words, Christ is not just a lordly head over the church. He is a dying, self-sacrificing, humble, loving rescuer, savior of the church. And it could be that Christ, the word Christ, the title Christ, is more, in Paul's mind, more closely associated with the anointed Messiah appointed to die as a Savior than is the word kurios or Lord. So you have the church submits to Christ with all of its connotations as Savior as well as Lord, and the wife submits to her, the husband as to the Lord because there is a lordly, headly, headship uh, relationship there. So that's, that's a possible explanation. I wouldn't uh, stake my life on it, but I'm inclined to think that's what's going on here. Lord corresponding to head, Savior corresponding to Christ. So that's the basic structure of the passage. Now let's make the obvious plain. Isn't it plain then that Paul is saying to wives, wives, take your cues from the church. Take your cues from the way you yourself submit to the Lord. The church becomes the model for how the so here, as the church, so wives, the church that is the people of God called to submit to her Christ, her Savior and Lord, so wives, take your cues from the church. And to husbands then, he says, husbands, Take your cues from the Lord Jesus. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. So you take your cues from Christ. And that's the mystery and the drama of Christian marriage. Wives are taking their cues from the calling of the church to submit to Christ, and husbands are taking their cues from Christ as the dying Savior and head of the church. So what do we say then in view of that drama is meant by submission? And I'm not going to give the full definition now, I'm just going to suggest four things that we must keep in mind as we work through this text that will shape how we define a wife's submission. The first is to remember that back in the previous paragraph, remember it said that we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and then there were five participles addressing one another, singing, making melody, giving thanks, submitting to one another in the fear of Christ. And then he starts giving specific examples of how this works itself out in relationships. And he says, wives, submit to your own husband. So the the first thing I would say is the meaning of this submit here is that it is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, submitting. And so is the headship of the husband, we will realize, because already back here, we are to submit to one another. But now he's saying, there isn't a simple mutuality. There is a complexity to this, because wives and husbands relate to other, each other differently. Husbands take their cues from 
Christ, and wives take their cues from the church. And so now we have a dynamic of headship and submission, but that doesn't nullify the fact that the first defining element is this submission is a fruit of, a work of the Spirit, and which means wives, if they wonder, how shall I submit to my husband? The answer is, be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Seek the fullness of the Holy Spirit and see how he leads. The second thing I would say with regard to how we're going to define submission is as to the Lord. She will determine what this involves by thinking through how she herself relates to her Lord. We'll come back to that next time. Third, submission is defined by how the church submits to Christ. So she has, this woman right here, has a personal relationship to the Lord, and she looks at that in order to discern how she relates to her husband, and there's a correlation there. It's not one-to-one, but a definite correlation. And here she looks at all the biblical teaching about what the church is expected to be like in its relationship to Christ. That's the third way that we think through what submission involves. And the fourth way is the meaning of head. Whatever this means is going to shape what this is. So those are the four ways that we will attempt to unpack the practicalities of what submission involves. One more observation before we shift our gears next time. Own. Wives submit to your own husband. This this means that marriage is wonderfully unique. Something is created between a man and a woman that has no parallel in any other relationship. A woman owes things to her husband, and a husband owes things to a woman. In marriage, they owe to nobody else. And so this is really important that we realize what she's being called upon to do here is not to, to do it to all men. There is a unique place for a woman to relate to a man and a unique place for a, a man to relate to a woman. So now next time we will take up what it means as to the Lord she submits to her own husband.